got a message, if you like, titles called Setting the Temp. Come on, we've got to learn to set the temp. And, and since I'm going to be talking a little bit about temperature, it reminds me of a Boudreaux and Thibodeau joke. See, I'm from, I'm from uh, South Louisiana. I'm from uh, Cajunville, right? How did I migrate up to here? Well, I don't know. Most <laughs> Louisiana is at the bottom of the list on like every single list, right, including education. Luckily, I was smart enough to migrate up here to Maryland, right? Except praise the Lord for Arkansas. They keep, Ele they keep Louisiana at like 49 instead of 50, all right? Come on. That's just a joke. Can anybody know somebody from Ar Arkansas? Just a joke. Just a joke. But we like to tell some Cajun jokes called Boudreaux and Thibodeau jokes. These are just two made-up Cajuns who aren't the smartest of all people. Um, but they love life. And Boudreaux shows up to work one day, and Thibodeau says, what you got there? And he says, I got my, I got my brand new thermos. <laughs> uh, my wife got me a thermos. <laughs> it's a thermos. And, and he said, Boud uh, Thibodeau said, what does that do? He says, it keeps the hot things hot, and it keeps the cold things cold. And Thibodeau said, how does it know? And he says, it just know. And he said, well, what did you bring today for lunch? He said, I brought a bowl of hot gumbo in here. And Thibodeau got so envious of Boudreaux down in some hot gumbo at lunchtime that he got his wife to buy him a thermos. And the next day, Thibodeau shows up to work with his thermos. And he said, look, Boudreaux, I got my a, a thermos so I could be just like you. It keeps the hot things hot and it keeps the cold things cold. And Boudreaux said, well, what did you pack in your thermos? And he said, I did one better than you. I put a bowl of hot gumbo in there and a frozen popsicle for later. Come on. <laughs> That's my boy, Thibodeau and Boudreaux, knowing how to regulate the temperature. But, you know, before Christ, most of us are thermometers. We've become accustomed this past year to thermometers and everywhere you walk in, people want you to scan or whatever, and they're checking to make sure that you are the right temperature, but most of us are thermometers in our life before we get to know Christ. Maybe even as we're getting to know Christ, there are places in our life that begin to heat up a little bit, and there are places in our life that begin to get a little bit chilly, and when we don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, we're a little bit volatile to going from, ah, oh, I'm in my green happy place, <laughs> I'm good right now, to, to being all of a sudden hanging out from this people group to that people group, and things begin to heat up, and things begin to get a little bit cold, and things begin to chill down, and we go from red to uh, uh, singing his praises to I'm good on Sunday to all of a sudden things are getting hot in here so take off all okay anyway come on you <laughs> you know the song right and so like we go from people group to people group or or we walk into a, a, a gossip conversation and we start singing she's as cold as ice all right okay anyway and 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 we go from healthy to not so good when I'm around these people or I'm around this place. And so I get red lights, but oh no, I found happy again. And then I find uh, chilly conversations and cold. And, and this can be the climate of our life when we uh, don't have a regulator in our life. When all we are is the thermometer, we are vulnerable to the temperatures of the, of the conversations we walk into, the places we walk into, the people groups we are surrounded with. If that's not enough, Satan likes to let us know that he is the thermostat. And if it's not enough for just the people groups and the places that we go to, man, I hate going to work. Everybody cold there. Or goodness, uh, I, can't, I, I can't be alone with this person because things start heating up. Or, or my boss is such a jerk, things start heating up. If it's not just that, then Satan starts going, come on, this is going to be so fun. Let's go ahead and, 
heat things up a little bit in culture, right? If I drop a little bit of news that causes more friction, right? Current affairs or worldly affairs or, or, or I start causing things in your life to start heating up. Let's see how you respond to this. And if we're not careful, we go from green to red real quick. And then Satan starts laughing. He says, let's chill some things down a little bit. Come on. This is going to be great. Let's cause their best friends to move. In fact, let's dangle a job interview in front of them that God doesn't want them to have, but it's too good to pass up so that they can go into a place where they are lonely and they are ill-equipped to walk it out on their own. It's just like Satan's toying with things. People are toying with things. We need to get a hold on things. I know in my life that when I first gave my life to Jesus, I was holy on Sundays and by Saturday, my holiness was fading a little bit. Anybody know what I'm talking about, right? I, I wanted to live it right, but it's like I could get in church and I could just begin to worship. And I said, there's another in the fire. And then all of a sudden, I'd get to hanging out with this people group and they'd start getting me all wound up on all kinds of things. Yeah, it's so unfair what they're doing to you at work. I can't believe I got to pick up another shift. And I go into hot mode and then maybe on Wednesday night, I get up with my Bible study or my small group. And then I go into another isolated area where I'm all by myself alone, maybe with my thoughts and things are going up and down. And I have found, this is what I learned, until I can become a thermostat myself, there are people and places I cannot go lest I become a thermometer again. I'm not a thermostat yet. I hadn't learned to hold my temperature in different climates. And I needed to be wise enough to know for a period of time, there are places I cannot go. There are things I will not participate in. There are people I will not surround myself with. Doesn't the Bible say that bad company corrupts good character? Doesn't the Bible say in Romans 7, 15 that I do not understand what I do? Come on. It's like Paul is doing this illustration up here. I don't understand what I do. I have a desire to do what is good, but I cannot Carry it out. Come on. I, 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 for I do not do the good I want to do, but I do the evil that I don't want to do. I'm just going back and forth. I, I just keep on doing it. Who will rescue me from this? Tell your neighbor, the battle is spiritual. The battle is spiritual. I better turn that space here away from me. I'm getting all heated up up here. I'm going to preach angry. To, no, I'm done. Listen, the battle is more spiritual than we often think. The Bible says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So it's, it's not necessarily a wrestle match against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in the unseen. What I like about this illustration is you can't always see the temperature changing, but you can feel it, can't you? you go off on your kids and you're just like, why did I do that? I don't even like the way I just parented. Get in a fight with your spouse and you're just like, what in the world were we fighting about? It didn't even matter. Get in it with your brother. Get in it with your best friends. And for the next two weeks, you're not best friends anymore. Come on. Ready to quit your job when you loved your job last week. You loved it yesterday. Come on. We can be so up and down, so hot and cold. And as long as we're thermometers, the culture can cause you and I to be so volatile. The culture just toys with us. The culture, even Satan can just toy with you a little bit. Like, this is so funny. They can't regulate their own temperature. So just watch this. <laughs> and then watch this. <laughs> and then watch this. And we're just falling for it. Listen, when I say culture, it includes people, shows, advertisements, pressures, agendas, politics, laws, artist it just it means anything that God has not necessarily made himself we can either get our pulse from Christ or we can get our temperature from the culture and we need to learn how to get our temperature from Jesus Christ luckily 
<laughs> Scripture is not void of some help for us. Our, 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 our built different boys in the book of Daniel, I told you we would be studying the book of Daniel. If you've got your Bible, I hope you're ready to take notes and turn in your Bible to Daniel chapter 3. I really want to encourage you, if you're taking notes, to write down, you need to read Daniel chapter 3 this week. Because I don't want you to take my word for it, I want you to take the Word's word for it. Come on, Daniel chapter 3, the Bible talks about our built different boys. And, and instead of focusing on Daniel, lest we think Daniel was some sort of superhuman, unattainable stature that we can't live up to. He had some boys as well who also lived a built different kind of lifestyle. They were renamed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego by the culture they lived in. How many of y'all say, thank you for that nickname, culture, right? Anybody know somebody who got a less than favorable nickname imposed upon them? And you're just like... Come on, man. That's, that's not even cool. Culture made up a nickname that I don't even like, or I wouldn't want to be called that, right? They got their name changed by the Babylonian culture. Could have caused them to heat up. Could have caused them to cool down. Cool. If you want to call me that, I'll stay in my corner. You stay in your corner. Or if you want to call me that, let's pull out our dukes. Let's go. Come on. Right? It could have caused that, but our built different boys experience changing climates too. Let's look at Daniel chapter 3. I'm going to jump around today, but you've already agreed to do your homework. If you agree with us, say, I'm going to read, Pastor. Okay. Thank you. Daniel chapter 3 says this. King Nebuchadnezzar. He made a gold statue 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide. Someone say that's big. <laughs> that sounds narcissistic. <laughs> For point of reference, the Lincoln Memorial is 19 feet tall. King Nebuchadnezzar said, nope. I need something at least four times that size. I want my stature to be 90 feet tall. And not just that, I want to set up. In verse 4, then a herald shouted out, People of all races and nations and languages, listen to the king's command. When you hear the sound of all kinds of musical instruments, bow to the ground to worship King Nebuchadnezzar's gold statue. Anyone. Who refuses to obey will immediately be thrown into a blazing fire. Do you hear what culture is yelling at all the Babylonians? I have just changed the temperature. I have just heated things up. You will respond to the culture I am setting. You will respond the way I want you to respond. And if you don't, things will literally start heating up. You'll be thrown into a blazing fire. Come on. Culture constantly yells out to you, I have a thermostat. If you don't pay attention to the thermostat at work, if you don't start paying attention to the way we joke around, if you don't start talk, paying attention to the way we flirt, if you don't start loosening up, if you don't start doing things my way, if you don't start acting the way I act, if you don't start doing this, i got a thermostat. I can make life difficult for you. I can make, I can make things so difficult for you. When I change the temperature... You change with it. I am your God. That's what culture often tries to do, right? It, it says to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you better listen up. If you value your life, you better do as I say. What we say goes. No questions asked. In fact, everybody else is doing it, so why are you going to make a big fuss about it, right? Since everybody else is doing it. It says, come, worship the golden standard of our time golden standard of their time was King Nebuchadnezzar and idolatrous worship. But all the time, Satan is coming up with gold standards of our time as well. Come on, this is what he does. In fact, write this down. This is just Satan being Satan disguised as culture. I don't believe this is ne King Nebuchadnezzar acting alone. I believe Satan is toying with things behind the scenes. It's not flesh and blood. It's principalities and powers. It's a power on a power trip saying, you do what I say when I say it. Or I'll take your life. I'll cost you your job. You will be unemployed. You will no longer have friends. You will not hang with us anymore. If you don't do this, if you don't say that, if you don't dress like this, you're not invited anymore. It's a threat. 
And it's just Satan being Satan disguised as culture. Why should we be surprised? 2 Corinthians 11 gives us the MO on Satan. Listen to this. The MO is this. I am not surprised. Even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no wonder that his servants, his, that means his demons, his, his fallen angels, it's no wonder that his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. What does this mean for you and I? It means you and I need to wisen up. Sometimes we need to go, why did it just heat up? <laughs> I know why it just heated up in the bedroom, because you're trying to get my wife and I to fight again. And I'm not giving in to this temperature change. I've got my own thermostat. I am no longer a thermometer where you just get the toy with my marriage. I am not going to chill things down with my kid because they need to not just be in time out. They need to be in perpetual time out with no talking for the next five days. I'll show them the cold shoulder or I'll snap back at some people who need some adjustment. No, I am no longer going to be the thermometer that is taking the temperature from others and from the culture. I am going to be a thermostat connected to the one who is for me who's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The one who I can build my life upon. He is the foundation, the sure foundation, that lest his feet be set on him, they be building on a solid foundation, building upon the rock. I need a rock. I need something. Because Satan so often disguises himself and has taught any sort of demon or fallen principality to disguise themselves. Have you ever noticed demons don't walk in the room and say, hey, I'm a demon here to screw up your day today. <laughs> nice to meet you. Doesn't, it doesn't do that, does it? You start talking to your buddy, and you're like, what has gotten into you today? <laughs> or you go into the room. I'm telling you, there was a demon fi fiddling with my Wi-Fi yesterday. I could not watch anything on demand yesterday. I called that demon out. All right, small demon. Probably not even a demon. Don't quote me on that. I'm just saying. I was frustrated, and I decided, am I going to give in to the media and, and, and let it get me out of wrap, or am I just going to connect with Jesus Christ? See, Satan has been using culture to erect counterfeits throughout all time. Golden calves, idols of power, idols of protection, Dagon and Baal, um, a, a golden statue, or a statue of King Nebuchadnezzar that will suddenly protect your life, idols of pride, idols of narcissism, false ideologies, kingdoms of comfort that we are constantly trying to set up in our life to hedge ourselves a little bit and protect ourselves from the culture from getting me hot and cold so often. Daniel's boys, as I said last week, held the line. Do you remember the line? I bought this property. This is what I signed up for. I wanted the jewel and the joy of my salvation. And there is a line where the property I bought ends. And this is what God's called me to. Daniel's boys knew how to hold the line. It says in Daniel chapter 3, verse 8, that some of the astrologers went to the king and informed on the Jews, there are some Jews from whom you have put in charge of the province of Babylon. They pay no attention, your majesty. They refuse to serve your gods, and they do not worship the gold statue you have set up. They don't worship the golden paycheck. They don't worship the golden standard of dress. They don't worship the, the, the present day habits of good social media. They don't worship putting yourself out there and pride and self-exaltation. They don't worship the way you've taught us to worship. They pay no attention to your thermostat. It's like you're doing this and they have unplugged themselves from you. Culture's paying attention, but they don't even respond to your thermostat anymore. It's as if they have their own thermostat. You're over here telling us how the good people of Babylon are supposed to live, and they have done unhooked themselves from what you are saying. They're not even listening. There are certain things they're not responding to. It's as if they've got their own thermostat set at a comfortable 70 degrees. <laughs> Same yesterday, today, and forever. Kids, stop touching the thermostat. Leave it be. Daddy set the right temperature. 
Oh, that's a word for today. The Father set the right temperature. Stop fiddling with the thermostat. Stop letting the culture fiddle with the thermostat. Daddy knows best. Take it from your daddy. I jacked that song. I know it. I did. I did. Rapunzel. She needed a daddy in her life. Okay, anyway. Verse 13. <laughs> I'm so off. Then Nebuchadnezzar flew into a rage. And he ordered that they be brought before him. And when they were brought in, Nebuchadnezzar is losing his mind. You want to talk about things heating up? He's heating up. He's like, why aren't you listening to me? (laughs) You're like, what are you yelling for? What are you getting all upset about? I have a right to be upset. You're not listening to me. Come on, what do you do when people aren't listening to you, when your employees aren't listening to you, when your kids aren't listening to you? Do you do the King Nebi route or do you stay at a cool 70 degrees? Come on, Father's going to keep me at a cool 70 degrees. And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, I will give you one more chance to bow down and worship that statue I have made. But if you refuse, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. If you think it's hot now with me breathing down your neck, with me yelling at you with coffee breath, with me getting all red in the face and threatening your life, if you think it's hot now, guess where it's going to be when you get to where you're going? I think it's kind of funny when Satan starts threatening that if you don't do as I say, it's going to get hot on this worldly temperature. He starts saying, what about my eternal temperature? What about the house where you live? Because you're trying to get me to buy into a temporary change of temperature. When you are only going to promise behind those threats an eternal heating up of temperature. A place of burning coil and fire. He says, And then what God will be able to rescue you from my powers if I throw you into the blazing furnace? Has culture ever demanded of you to do like them or they'll throw you to the curb? Or they'll throw you to the wolves? Or they'll throw you to the fire? Oh, come on, this week my wife and I got to meet with a young lady who um, is working and she's in one of our freedom groups and I can't wait to share her story with you, but I'm going to let her share her story with you. But she shared how throughout her college life her friend said, if you're not going to drink, then you can no longer ha- hang with us. She learned that she had an alcoholic problem and that her whole lineage was prone to it and she could not self-regulate herself. But her friends kept telling her, if you don't drink, then you can no longer hang with us if you don't smoke you can no longer hang with us if you don't do these types of drugs you're not a friend of mine what do you do when culture says that things are heating up and I'm going to give you one more chance trying to get all holy on me trying to get all right with God on me I'm going to give you one more chance to get things right or else you're kicked to the fire you're kicked to the curb what do you do when culture demands seem to be heating up in the furnace now you write this down you just trust God you got to trust God you say I can with or without you (laughs) with or without this group of friends with or with I had to walk away from a group of friends because I was still a thermometer learning how to be a thermostat learning how to be hooked up to a thermostat and so there were times where I said I cannot hang with you any longer it's not because I don't love you I just cannot put myself through it because I don't trust myself around you I don't trust myself in these places in these situations I don't trust myself we've got to learn to trust God so Shadrach Meshach and Abednego they told the king that they would never bow down that they would trust God the band's going to come join me as uh, they, they, they get thrown into the furnace they get thrown into the fire and then here's what King Nebuchadnezzar says in verse 24 suddenly come on some of y'all know the story suddenly Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement (gasps) he exclaimed to his advisors didn't we tie up three men and throw them into the furnace look I see four I see four men they are unbound They're walking around in the fire, and they are unharmed. And the fourth one, the fourth one looks like a god. What is going on with my eyes?
lives. What is going on? I threatened that I could ruin them. I threatened that I, I, would, I would cancel them in the culture. I threatened that I would mute them. I threatened them that I had the power and none other. And yet, I threw them into the furnace. And look what happens. I thought I threw three in there. There's a fourth one in there. That fourth one looks like a god. What does it fourth figure look like for him to say it looks like a God? What does a God look like? I don't know, but even the world will know when God's moving on our behalf. I thought I summoned a diagnosis, but there seems to be another one with them in that room. I thought I told them that their job was over. I thought I told them that their influence was done. I thought I told them that their family is broken up and done for. But there seems to be God on their side. There's another in the fire. And, and, and you need to write this down when I go with God, God goes with me. When I go with God, God goes with me. They literally said, I can go with the culture's demands and bow down to a false idol, or I can go the Christian way, and I'm going to go with Christ every time. And even if I lose my life, God will go with me. Never have I seen the righteous forsaken. I'm going to go with God. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no blazing furnace, for I know my Lord is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. And so there's three things I see here. When culture tries to crack down, but you refuse to bow down, oh, I want to tell you this, come on, you'll finally be unbound, walking around, and holy sound. Come on, I need to say that again, and you need to write that down. When the culture tries to crack down and force you to bow down, I see three things. That you will finally be unbound, walking around, and holy sound. These three men were unbound, no longer restricted to the things of this world, no longer held captive. I got to smoke again or I'll lose my mind. I got to drink again or I'll lose my mind. I got to get coffee again or I'll lose my mind. I got to call my mama or I'll lose my mind. Come on, some of those things, I'm telling you. I need to get unbound from those things. I need to get unbound from my spouse being my only source of affirmation. For God has set my temperature in my life, and I am wholly made. I am unbound. I'm walking around. I am not frozen to the things of fear. When culture has threatened me, I'm no longer paralyzed with fear, but I'm steady walking. Come on, throw me into the furnace. Try to throw me out. Come on, somebody help me preach. Come on. This, I am walking around. I am not unbound. And I, number three, I am wholly sound. I am unharmed. I have been the spirit of fear has been taken from me, and my God has given me a spirit of power, love, and guess what? A sound mind. I can keep my cool even when the culture is heating up. Even when current affairs are heating up, I can keep my peace. I can walk right. I don't have to shout and condemn other people. I don't have to isolate from other people. I have a thermostat. I have a God who keeps me regulated. Somebody help me preach this morning. Somebody give God a praise break right now. Come on. If you're going to cut the cord, if you're going to cut the cord on culture today, Stand up and let's praise this morning. Come on. If you're declaring to the devil that you're going to take back control of your life, you're going to knock this thing down. I'm no longer responding to this. I am going to respond to the word of God. Stand up and praise him right now. Let's sing it. Either way, I will bow to the things of this world. To be another in the fire. Should I ever need revival? How good you've been to me. I count the joy come every battle. Cause I know that's where you Come on, I can see the light. I can see the light. Proclaim it. I can see the light in the darkness as it dark. Declare it over the devil's head. Sing it. Praise louder than culture's threats. I can see the light. It's coming. And I can see the light in the darkness as the darkness bows to hell. I can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between west and I can feel the crowd shake beneath us as the prison walls cave in.
I close by going back to a Romans 7 scripture. I don't understand myself. I, I end up doing the things I don't want to do. And the things I don't want to do, I keep doing those things. Who can save me from this body of death? Oh, that scripture doesn't stop there. Verse 28. Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. He sets the temperature. So many times in my life, so much of my past, I let the culture be my Lord. I let the circumstances be my Lord. But no longer. Today I'm declaring that these are not my Lord. All of these things must bow down to the name that's above every name. He is my Lord, Jesus Christ. Right now, if you're in this place and you say, Pastor Drew, I have responded to the wrong Lord in my life. I've responded to my, my attitude, the culture, the, the temperature. I've been up and down, and I don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Or maybe you say, I know I've walked away from him because I am not the same person that I used to be when I walked with him. If you're in this place and you say, Pastor Drew, would you pray for me? I want to give my life to Jesus Christ today. Would you just slip your hand high up into the air as we pray for you? Yes. Yes. Come on. I thank you. People online, you say, that's me. Just write into the chat. Include me in this prayer. And our hosts will connect with you. And we're going to pray. Come on. Today is the day to cancel the culture and to turn up the volume on the Lord Jesus Christ. Cut the culture's control over my life, and I'm going to give the power control to my God, my Lord, my thermostat, the maker of me in my mother's womb, the one who knows me best. Come on, church, let's pray together. Say, Jesus, I give you my life. I am a sinner. I've made mistakes. I've done things wrong. I'm so sorry, Lord. I'm sorry for the pain it caused you. I'm sorry for not living the way I know you made me to live. Father, would you give me another chance? And you take control of my life. I cancel anyone else's control over my life. You be the Lord Jesus Christ over my life. Thank you for a brand new start. I am a new person because Jesus died for me on the cross and gave me new life. In Jesus' name I pray. And everyone said amen and amen.